The United States has just come out of one election cycle and is already embarking on another. The 5th of November 2024 elections are already on the radar and that means only one thing. The party primaries to choose their candidates are just around the corner. And for now, the Republican Party looks like it will have the most hotly contested primary. Over the past few years, former President Trump, in addition to amassing a huge collection of court indictments and electoral defeats, has also divided and radicalized the Republican Party. Today, it is easy to find Trump supporters who will deny that the United States is a democracy, who question the legitimacy of the courts, the prosecutors, and the electoral system itself. In many cases, we are talking about true fans who have found in Trump their very own messiah. And because of this, more and more Republicans believe that the time has come to turn the page, to bet on new leadership and return to the principles and positions that defined them up until Trump's arrival. That includes a sense of state, commitment to the truth, and yes, respect for their political opponents. To tell you, he is a decent person and a person that you do not have to be scared as president of the United States. No man, no man. He's a He's a, he's a decent family man, citizen, that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues, and that's what this campaign is all about. Wow, that seems like a really long time ago. Now, it is still not clear that they will succeed because Trump, yes, Trump, is running again. And not only that, despite his sex scandals, such as the one involving former porn actress Stormy Daniels, the assault on the Capitol, and the appearance of numerous classified documents in his home, in his bathroom no less, Trump has once again placed himself at the top of the Republican race. I'll never leave. Trump vows to stay in 2024 presidential race, even if convicted. So could Trump force the Republicans to have a presidential candidate indicted for a federal crime or even convicted and perhaps imprisoned? Well, according to many US legal experts, by proxy, he could do just that. For now, there is no legal impediment for him to run for president, even if he were to end up behind bars. In fact, there are already two precedents for such a thing. In 1920, Eugene Debs, leader of the Socialist Party, ran for office from prison. And in 1992, Lyndon LaRouche, a conspiracy theorist who had been convicted of fraud in 1988, did the same thing. But hold on a minute. This video is not about former President Trump, at least not directly. So we have to ask ourselves a few questions here. Is Trump unstoppable? Is the Republican Party doomed not to be able to turn the page? It's tricky, but sooner or later, it will. Are there no other figures capable of fighting for the Republican nomination? Well, yes, there are. In fact, there are already several politicians who have announced their candidacy for the Republican primaries. Among them are South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, Trump's own former Vice President Mike Pence, the former Governor of South Carolina and former Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley, and the former Governor of New Jersey and former Trump ally Chris Christie, among others. But if there is one candidate who has come out on top with fame, important endorsements, and lots and and lots of money, it is none other than the current governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. You have no doubt heard of this politician who managed to storm the last election in the state of Florida. He is a man who has managed to transform a historically swing state, that is, one that has fought tooth and nail between Democrats and Republicans, into a strongly Republican one. For example, just five years ago in 2018, DeSantis won the gubernatorial election by a mere 32,500 votes, a margin of 0.4%. So how about in 2022? Well, in 2022, DeSantis won by a margin of, wait for this one, 19 points. Now, what has this seemingly earnest guy done to raise passions in the Sunshine State? Would he be able to replicate this incredible success at the federal level if he were eventually named the Republican nominee for the White House? Well, in this video, Visual Politics viewers, we're going to tell you all the key details about this heavyweight in American politics. We will cover what have been his main milestones in Florida, what vision he has for the country, and we will also tell you why he has a serious chance of ending up being a tough opponent for the Democrats. Will Ron DeSantis be the GOP's star or a star-studded promise? Let's find out. Ron's success. 
Old-fashioned conservatism mixed with touches of tough guy, a bit of charisma, a sprinkling of populism here and there, and quite controversial behavior and speeches. That would be the concoction that could describe DeSantis in a single sentence, but obviously we're not going to stop there. This governor has generated a lot of talk, and the reason goes back to Florida, the trendy state of which he is the governor. In recent years, Florida has been experiencing an intense economic boom, with growth rates higher than those in the rest of the country and an unemployment rate of 2.5%, practically at historic lows. This is also driving companies' competition for workers, which in turn is driving up wages in a state that has traditionally had low wages in the American context. With all this data, it will surely not surprise you to know that in 2022, Florida was the state that gained the most population of the entire country, with an annual growth rate of almost 2%. What's more, a good part of this population did not come from abroad, but from other states such as New York or Illinois. These two states, along with California, have become the three giants, all three of them Democrat states, by the way, which continue to lose population. The point is that, for all these reasons, Ron DeSantis' main letter of introduction for the Republican primaries is, precisely, to present himself with management experience and actions, successes that speak for him and not just empty words. And keep in mind that we are not only talking about statistics, but also, as we will see, about many very important legislative changes for conservatives. So what exactly has Ron DeSantis done? More importantly, is all that glitters really gold. Well, I can already tell you that there is something for everyone in this story. Sweet and sour in equal parts. Let's just say that while Florida's strong economic performance is undeniable, the record of this governor and potential candidate is replete with policies that some of you will like and others will be horrified by. In any case, let me just say that they will not leave you indifferent. So let's take a look at them. The Iron Man of Paradise. DeSantis is a politician who, on social issues, is very reminiscent of the most traditional conservative republicanism. And yes, in Florida, he has spared no effort to shift the state's policies, laws, and regulations towards more conservative positions, or as he likes to call them, anti-woke. We have embraced freedom. We have maintained law and order. We have protected the rights of parents. We have respected our taxpayers, and we reject woke ideology. As a result, DeSantis has managed to become one of the most relevant figures in the anti-woke movement in the United States. On the one hand, we could start by mentioning his push for a law that prohibits universities from using federal or state money to develop activities that promote diversity, inclusion, or equality. DeSantis wants to remove debates that he believes have been imposed by the left from the education system. This same act also obliges universities to revise their course content so that their syllabi do not distort historical events or include critical race theory. This is intended to remove from the classroom theories that argue that the African-American population continues to suffer from institutionalized discrimination and racism. I mean, remember Black Lives Matter? But that is only the beginning. So how many parents want their kindergartners to have transgenderism or something injected into classroom instruction. Another of the Florida governor's most controversial laws has been the Parental Rights in Education Act, more popularly known as the Don't Say Gay Law. This law basically prohibits, or rather delays, sex education, including everything that has to do with sexual diversity in public schools. Initially, the law prohibited this type of education until students were between 8 and 9 years old, but it has just been extended until they are around 13 to 14 years old. Of course, for its detractors, this law serves to discriminate against LGBTQ students and families, and also to ban books and movies in schools that address these issues. However, for its advocates, this law leaves it up to parents to choose when and how to educate educate their children in this matter instead of leaving it up to the state, at least until the children reach a certain age. Undoubtedly, this has been one of the most controversial laws for the DeSantis administration in Florida, a law that has landed him in a savage confrontation, a dogfight really, with the largest company in the state, Disney. After protests, Disney CEO speaks out against Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill. Now, why is this so important? Well. Think about it for a moment. What is there in the city of Orlando that every child in the world would love to visit? Exactly, the Walt Disney World theme park. 
Well, the fact is that precisely because it has such strong presence in his state, Disney began to receive strong pressure from activists to take a stand against this law. And when they finally did, let's just say that DeSantis lost his cool and started behaving practically like a banana republic warlord. Yes, this is perhaps one of the biggest glitches on his record. To rail against the largest company in your state and threaten it with legal changes and punishments for exercising their right to express themselves as they please? I mean, I don't know, it doesn't sound very smart, right? Kind of a major misstep there, Governor. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signs law to put Disney District under state control. In this video, we are not going to get into the issue of company-managed districts. We will talk about that another time. But what I do think we have to keep in mind is that a politician should not use his or her power to politically and fiscally punish companies that speak out in opposition. The state they govern is not their personal estate. But Mr. DeSantis couldn't care less. In fact, he often compares himself to Teddy Roosevelt when it comes to launching his particular crusade against large corporations. Because yes, Ron DeSantis does have large corporations in his sights. Now, if you think that's all, you are sorely mistaken. DeSantis has given much more of himself in his four years plus as Florida's governor. For example, he has also pushed through legislation to prohibit state agencies from taking ESG criteria, that is environmental, social and governance criteria, into account when investing. He has also recently banned abortions after six weeks of pregnancy instead of the 15 weeks that DeSantis himself set in 2022. For critics, this basically amounts to banning a large portion of abortions because one third of women find out they are pregnant after six weeks and 20% find out even later. So, you can see that, in a way, it all has a kind of common pattern. DeSantis is going head-on and full speed ahead against slogans that have dominated political discourse for the past few years. Next to him, Trump is practically an apprentice. Among other reasons, in the display of conviction, Ron DeSantis really believes in all these changes. And sticking with this particular Made in America conservative agenda, what are we missing? Exactly. Another of DeSantis' relevant measures in Florida has been to make the use and carrying of firearms much more flexible. Specifically, he has promoted a law that allows anyone in Florida to own guns and carry them concealed on the street without the need for any license, no training tests, no background check, nothing at all. For DeSantis, it is clear, carrying a gun is a constitutional right. And let's not forget, in another of the governor of Florida's controversial measures, he has facilitated the death penalty, eliminating the need for unanimity of the 12 members of the jury that had been required by law to a supermajority of eight against four. What an agenda! And we haven't even got to the immigration issue yet. DeSantis has become one of the toughest political figures in the United States on illegal immigration. You could say that in Florida, his administration has declared war on undocumented immigrants. And pay attention because this is important to know. In the United States, an illegal immigrant these days can work, can have a driver's license, and can even buy a house or send his or her children to school. In this sense, it is a much less strict country than the usual norm in Europe or many Asian countries. As long as you go to work and follow the rules and laws to the letter, let's just say that it is a country where they kind of turn a blind eye to whether or not you have the right documentation. Nevertheless, it seems that DeSantis is not too happy about this system and has declared war on it in Florida. You, you can't build a strong economy based on illegality. Well, along these lines, the governor of the Sunshine State has taken a series of measures such as making it a third-degree felony to use a fake ID to get a job. He has also prohibited illegal immigrants from driving, even in cases where they carry a driver's license from a state other than Florida. Not only that, private employers with 25 or more workers will have to use a mandatory electronic verification system to confirm that workers are legally in Florida. And in addition, it will force hospitals that are attached to the Medicaid program to ask about the legal status of patients. These are all measures designed to facilitate the identification of illegal immigrants. Surprised? This guy makes Trump look pro-immigration. What's more, all these measures have been accompanied by a whole media show that is honestly pretty questionable. Which one? Well, take a look at this. Florida's DeSantis flies dozens of illegal immigrants to Martha's Vineyard, escalating tactic against sanctuary destinations. Fortunately, there's a lot of folks that come across. Where do they want to end up? A lot want to come to, because everyone wants to come to Florida. Our message to them is we are not a sanctuary state 
And it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction. And yes, we will help facilitate that transport for you to be able to go to greener pastures. Now, what is all this about sanctuary destinations and why spend $12 million expressly to send dozens of immigrants to an island in the state of New York, located almost 1,000 miles, that's more than 1,600 kilometers, away from Florida. Well, it is nothing less than a national political marketing campaign, and the choice of destination was far from accidental. You see, according to New York state law, the authorities must initially take care of illegal immigrants arriving in the state, for instance, by providing them with accommodation. Yet lately, this system has collapsed due to massive arrivals, resulting in many immigrants having to be accommodated in hotels, something that has boosted spending in the state and in New York City itself. In short, DeSantis' measure seems to aim to attack the sanctuary states and cities, that is, territories that limit their cooperation with the federal government in immigration control matters and that he believe encourages illegal immigrants. Immigrants who, according to DeSantis, in many cases, enter through Florida. Now, why Martha's Vineyard? Well, because this New York island is a favorite vacation and the second home destination for a lot of millionaires and politicians who support the Democratic Party. Even former President Barack Obama has a home there worth more than $12 million. That is to say that what Cisantis was looking for was to make those Democratic elites live the drama of illegal immigration in their own vacation playground. That's at least what the team has said to justify such a campaign. A campaign that, if you think about it, and whether or not you agree with being more or less strict on immigration, does nothing but treat people like cattle. And the whole thing was a national advertising campaign at the expense of, who else? Florida taxpayers. Now, from what we have told you about his main milestones as governor, you may be more or less clear about what type of politician the profile we are dealing with is, but what about his proposals for the country as a whole? What would he do if he were president and what positions would he take on the most important international issues? Well, let's find out. Make America Florida. Visual politic viewers, as you have probably guessed from the title of this section, Ron DeSantis' political agenda for the United States is based on one thing, making America in the image and likeness of his Florida. The Florida he has been changing for the past four years. Therefore, the main lines of DeSantis' policy could be to extend to the whole country all or most of the laws we have described to you so far. And that includes extending and facilitating the death penalty, restricting sex education until well into adolescence, the all-out war against illegal immigration, and the fight against large companies that do not dance to his Beat. Now, politics at the federal level is a lot different than at the state level in many ways. One example is that DeSantis would have to set an international agenda from the White House. And here, here is where new doubts arise. How does DeSantis see the world? What can we expect from his international positions? Well, to find out, the first thing to do is to look at Ukraine. In the Republican Party, the current division is so great that there is a major sector that is strongly pro-Ukraine and NATOist, and at the same time, there is another strongly pro-Russian sector that demands the end of US aid to Kyiv. And in the middle? Well, maybe somewhere in the middle is where DeSantis currently finds himself. Let me explain. In 2015, when he was a congressman and right after the Russian occupation of Crimea, DeSantis was one of the big promoters of US military aid to Ukraine. Now, however, his position has changed and he believes that this aid is not vital to US national interests. According to him, the United States has to focus on domestic problems, such as the opioid epidemic or the migration crisis. The point is that these problems already existed in 2015. In other words, DeSantis has changed his tune on such an important issue simply because he wants to counter Trumpist voters. In the same vein, he has also questioned the impartiality and political objective of the trials against Donald Trump and indicts a former president on misdemeanor offenses that they're straining to try to convert into felonies. That is when you know that the law has been weaponized for political purposes. That is when you know that the left is using that to target their political opponent. But back to the foreign affairs issue. Not helping allies on vital issues would make the USA appear like an unreliable partner. And yes, this could again give totalitarian regimes a free pass to act 
with impunity. I mean, we all remember how Trump's inaction and ambiguity ended up with China illegally wrecking the special political status that Hong Kong held. Not so fast though, because DeSantis' international agenda may have many more contradictions than certainties. For instance, if we leave Ukraine and talk about Taiwan, DeSantis said it is a country of critical interest to the United States and he has taken a position in favor of continuing to supply them with weapons. What's more, as governor, he has also been very belligerent with China, going so far as to prohibit almost all Chinese citizens from investing in Florida real estate. And not only that, he is also a strong supporter of Israel and American assistance to the Jewish state. He subscribes to the Abraham Accords and of course advocates for the American embassy to be, where else, in Jerusalem in Latin America. DeSantis opposes erasing sanctions on Cuba and is highly critical of the Maduro regime. Of course, when it comes to helping immigrants, things change, because many of the immigrants that DeSantis has expelled from Florida and set in planes to other states were precisely the people fleeing the Chavista regime in Venezuela. Anyway, you've heard about not leading by example? Well, here's a fine example of that. In short, DeSantis was a politician who, as we said at the beginning of the video, mixes conservatism in its purest form. A strong hand, charisma, some populism, and a strange pleasure in acting without caring too much about what people will say. Obviously, his messaging alerts us to the fact that he is a politician capable of selling out a country like Ukraine to Putin, perhaps solely for electoral reasons in order to reach 2024 by opposing the current occupant of the White House and, at the same time, to capture the Trumpist electorate. Remember that Trump has always maintained that the whole invasion of Ukraine could be solved with a phone call in 24 hours. How terrifying. In short, we are talking about a profile full of contrasts, contradictions, and nods to radical sectors of the GOP that has made many see him as a kind of Trump with good manners. Although, honestly, if you are a conservative, I think you will like this candidate much more than you will like Trump. Now, at this point, the questions are over to you. What do you think of DeSantis' political profile? Do you think he will achieve his apparent goal of uniting the support of the more traditional Republican Party and that of the Trumpists? Will he manage to defeat his former friend and the now not-so-friendly Trump in the primaries? Well, you can leave us your answers and your opinions below in the comments. And remember, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to all of us here at Visual Politic so you don't miss any of our new ones coming out soon. And if you subscribe to our Patreon, you'll receive exclusive content and gifts. You have the link in the description below. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.